The build-up to Pope Francis's planned encyclical on global climate change has begun, with the moral case for acting to combat man-made global warming taking center stage in a way it never has before. The Pontifical Academy of Sciences uh, is one of the most prestigious academies uh, in the world. Only like the top, top scientists are invited into that academy. We're not scientists, but we know some people who are scientists, and we can go and really listen to them and, and figure this out. Upon his election, a new pope chooses a papal name, which often signals to the world what kind of reign his will be. This pope is the first and only pope in 700 years to name himself after Francis of Assisi, beloved for his connection to the poor and his love of the natural world. The saint is often depicted in the company of animals, preaching to birds, even to wolves. St. Francis is the patron saint for those who promote ecology. St. Francis had uh, an awakening where he was able to see himself in, tied into all of creation, all of the creatures as, as his, he, he would say like, my sister birds or my brother wolf, uh, and, and even into um, kind of a cosmological way of seeing it and, and brother sun and sister moon. I was in darkness, but brother sun illuminated my soul. And now, I can see so clearly. And he saw himself embedded within all creation, not apart from. You know, we, we do that so much of, well, we got the environment out there, and then there's human life over here. But he really uh, was able to see uh, himself as, as a brother to all creatures. I want to be, to be happy. I want to live like the birds in the sky. I want to experience the freedom and the purity that they experience. In Jesus' parables, uh, most were connected with, with the reality, or many with nature, the symbols, the things that he used. Consider the lilies of the field. They do not spin. They do not weave but not even Solomon in all his glory was so arrayed as one of these. It dates back, you know, care for creation and, and, and honoring this gift that God has given us. Um, Isaiah has a lot of strong language about what will happen to us if we don't take care of the land, it will spew us forth. Pope Francis discussed respect for the environment during his homily on Pentecost Sunday. He said that protecting the world is a requirement of faith since Earth was created by God. On issues like evolution and the age of the universe, there's reasons in a literal reading of the Bible why people would not agree with what the science says. So you could actually have a passage in the Bible that says one thing and a scientist says another thing. But with climate change, there's no such passage. In fact, there's passages saying, you know, God will destroy those who destroy the Earth. That message of saving this which he has created is present from Genesis, the first book of the Bible, to the last book of the Bible. Because in Genesis 2, it says, steward it, care for it, protect it. And in Revelation, the last book of the Bible, the Apostle John says, speaking uh, of God, he says in a vision, I will destroy those who destroy the earth. Whoa. Il rispetto del creato è un'esigenza della nostra fede. If we do not act to save this planet, we are being unfaithful, most of all, to God. And there's other passages talking about how humans are given responsibility to care for every little thing created on the face of the earth. Il giardino in cui viviamo non ci è affidato perché lo sfruttiamo ma perché lo coltiviamo e lo custodiamo con rispetto. So climate change has been falsely framed as an issue between faith and science. If anything, people of faith should be on the front lines of trying to address this issue rather than dragging behind. Catholic teaching uh, on this um, dates back many decades. St. John Paul II mentioned it in 1990, talking about greenhouse gases and this threat that's coming our way. For most of my Christian life, um, social justice has been a big, uh, a big factor there. Whenever anything environmental happens, the, the people that pay the first and hardest price are those who are 
disadvantage and it's usually people of color and of course we call that environmental injustice. Climate change is, is at, it, at its heart, it's a social justice issue. The societies that contribute the least to climate change are the ones who are being impacted by it the most. And they're also the societies that are least able to adapt to it. There's not social justice and environmental justice. It's all justice. Given that social justice is at the core of Christian values, it makes it an issue that Christians should be highly concerned about. When you die, God is not going to ask you how old is the planet or whether he created it in six days or six billion years. That same God who created us is going to ask, what did you do with what I created? Did you steward it? Did you care for it? Did you save it?